live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Inforum DC 2018. Brought to you by Infor. Well, welcome back to the Walter Washington Convention Center. We're in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, of course, as we continue our coverage here on theCUBE of Inforum 2018, along with Dave Vellante. I'm John Walls. It's a pleasure to welcome uh, Diraj Shah in with us, the CEO of AVAP. And Diraj, thanks for joining us Good this afternoon. Good to see afternoon. you again. Absolutely, big pleasure. It was great talking to you for the last few years and uh, pleasure to be back here. Yeah, I'm always curious. I mean, AVAP, I read a little bit. I mean, five yeah. letters of Sanskrit language. Yeah. What do the five letters represent? I mean, how'd you come up with the title? You know, that's yeah. the first question that gets asked. Yeah. Uh, two questions, Sorry I guess. Cliche, but I just, no, I'm no, really the two questions yeah. is why did you start AVAP? And the other question is, what is AVAP? And it's actually five uh, elements in Sanskrit, and each of them are tied to a cultural value that we hold at AVAP. So uh, Agni, which is fire, stands for passion. Because I'm a deep believer of being very passionate in what you do. If you're passionate, you'll follow through on it and it won't feel like work. Uh, water is tied to innovation. Sky is tied to goals. We're very uh, ambitious, you know, and we've been able to have like a rocket ship type of growth so far, and we continue to aspire to do more. Uh, we have Earth, which is tied to eco-conscious, because we'd like to be globally eco-conscious and genuine in what we're doing. And then Air, uh, which is transparency. I think we live in a world that, uh, you know, you really don't need a lot of bureaucracy and the more there is transparency, the better there is uh, organizational development. Gotcha, well thank you. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. the rundown. So services and solutions, um, uh, and the relationship with N4, I mean, walk us through that a little bit, you know, why you're here. Absolutely, so uh, we're Infor's most decorated partner, so I'd like to say that, because we just came off the stage uh, getting four awards with Infor this year. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank Fantastic. you very much. Uh, partner, their overall partner of the year, five years in a row. Uh, our partnership with Infor uh, started five years ago. Um, uh, before that, it was with Lawson. So when uh, Charles Phillips and the team came on board, uh, I was in the back of the room and I heard Charles kind of lay out his vision in 2012. And he said, I want to do two things. I want to make software that is industry specific. And this is coming at a time where everything was one size fits all. And he said, we want to reinvent the software that's driven for future technologies, cloud, mobile, big data, right? Saw a great opportunity and we made a momentous decision of parking all our eggs in the info basket and just doing info. And that served us well going from 25, at that point we were like uh, 25 employees to having over 450 today. Mm. Wow, and we've, we've talked about this in the past. Yeah. So you got in early and you know, now you're seeing some of the big guys come in, mm -hmm. so you have to stay ahead of them. Um, how are you doing that and why are you succeeding? You know, it's not necessarily uh, always being ahead. So that actually that's a question I got, mm. is that Deloitte's here, Accenture's here, Capgemini's here, do you feel threatened? Uh, we actually don't because uh, it's a validation of what's occurring in this ecosystem with the big system integrators coming in. And with a rising tide, all boats rise. So uh, we've actually partnered with some of these large SIs because there's roles that they play and we let them do a lot of business transformation, change management, program management, and we do what we do best, which is Infor knowledge and consulting services. So deep, deep Infor, that's kind of, yeah. it's ironic, right? Infor specialty is the last mile, you know, micro, micro uh, uh, industry capabilities. Yes. And that's really kind of how you specialize is deep in for expertise. Exactly. So give yeah. us an example of, you go through uh, 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 an engagement, you got one of the big SIs and they're going to yeah. do their big global thing, business process change, they're, they really are global in scale, et cetera. Where do you come in? Where does Infor sort of, where does their micro services uh, uh, yeah. or, or, or micro function leave off and where do you pick up? So yeah, I'll give you a real world example. In fact, I was just with this customer earlier this morning, Christus Health. Uh, they are one of the largest health systems in the country, 60 hospitals, close to 60,000 employees. Um, they're looking for a transformation on their ERP, full suite, HCM, supply chain, financial. Went through a large system selection process. Uh, you know, the usual competitive race uh, with uh, Oracle, Workday, Infor, uh, kind of being in that race. It was down-selected to Infor and Oracle, 
as the two vendors that had full capabilities that they were looking for. Um, and then once they made their decision on Infor as a vendor of choice, they did a services RFP, which uh, we partnered with Deloitte uh, because the scope of that was, as I said earlier, around business transformation services uh, that we didn't have in our bag. And Deloitte is, does not have the 20 years of expertise, the deep Infor knowledge around the solutions of Infor that we have within our healthcare team. So we bridged and built an alliance that uh, today is starting the project journey in uh, Infor, Deloitte, AVAP, Christus to make that project a success. And the, f the capabilities that, you, that, that they yeah. were looking for that you said that Infor and Oracle had were what, the, the coverage of the functionality across the suites? Was it the cloud capabilities? Give so I think that, that. Uh, you know, the one thing I'll tell you is the consumer, in this case, the healthcare market, if we talk about them, is getting extremely knowledgeable. So the where it's starting is around cloud. So gone are the days, I see a lot of commercials out there about real cloud, artificial cloud, private cloud, public cloud. There's a, a lot of education already around single tenant, multi tenant, and they understand. So it starts with the cloud platform. That is the software provider on a stable, secure cloud platform? And are the applications hosted on a multi-tenant uh, as opposed to individually hosted for each customer? And then they break it down into the different buckets of the applications, uh, you know, within HCM, within supply chain, within financials to see what not at product features. So gone are the days of looking at feature functionality but they are business processes and best practices. And that's really, in my opinion, where Infor really came ahead at Christus. In the multi-tenant versus hosted, I mean, a lot of people would say, well, who, why does the customer care? I'm presuming the customer cares because when you do a software release, it, it's just seamless, right? Yes. Versus, okay, we got to, freeze the code and do an upgrade, it's, it's more disruptive. Is that why? Uh, yes, uh, that's definitely a large portion because over the period of time, every time there is a uh, manufactured change on the software side, development change, you're adding code that impacts the customer to have to take their system down and then bring it back up. And here, it's done without the customer even finding out. So it's a huge advantage. The second advantage is the cost which you know, in today's world, uh, not as much because hardware has become very cheap, but it's still clunkered hardware that's sitting on the premise as opposed to you know, uh, individually putting it out there as opposed to having one system that's scalable. And then your third is security on uh, multi-tenant capable uh, software. You know, it's more secure than your single-tenant capability. And, and AVAP brings to the table, so it's not, I mean, Infor has the micro-vertical mm -hmm. function, so, Yours is what, onboarding, implementation, training, those so kinds of things? Yeah, so it starts with helping them align and educate on the system selection on what it does. So we have a, a, a offering called Align and Define that allows customers to prepare for the cloud, to take steps today and educate them on what needs to be done. Uh, once they do that, then it's going through the implementation process and post-implementation is optimization. So on the optimization side, AVAP also has capabilities on our EHR side. So one of the big challenge in healthcare is a wall that exists between the ERP and the EHR. You have your Oracle and Infor on the ERP side, and then you have Epic and Cerner on the EHR. And the, there's like a wall where one doesn't talk to the other. And the systems need to be really integrated to be able to drive efficiency and cost benefits for that. So that's one of the things that we're heavily investing in. Well, healthcare is your biggest business, right? Correct. So what's going on these days? You're, you're, you obviously, last sort of wave was Obamacare, yeah. the Affordable Care Act. Um, there's some uncertainty around that. Certainly meaningful use is still a big yeah. deal for, for a lot of healthcare providers. Um, EMR mm -hmm. is still you know, a big deal. What are the hot trends, what are the drivers, and, and how are you guys responding? ERP, ERP is the hottest trend right now in the healthcare market. So there's a lot of fatigue with healthcare 
having gone through meaningful use over the last decade of spending hundreds of millions of dollars of putting in the EHR platforms. So that fatigue has, and that focus on EHR has led to no real advancement on the ERP side. And that's why we're in the midst of what I think is one of the largest wave in the healthcare industry around ERP platforms that we're seeing. There were 55 system selections done just in the last 12 months. My personal uh, view is that over the next three to five years, we're gonna see 80% of healthcare systems swap or upgrade their ERP platforms. Wow, okay, uh, please, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, so swap, I mean, so, I mean, what's, what's uh, I guess, the fundamental of that decision? What, what, what uh, where? So there are a lot what's, of what's, legacy providers. Yeah, so right. uh, the market's going to get consolidated. So we, I know we always talk about Oracle, Info, Workday, but there's a lot of other providers. There's, uh, if you count mid-market and up, there's, 5,000 health systems out there so as customer very base. Very fragmented. Though. Very okay. fragmented. Okay, right. So there's McKesson as an example. McKesson had a big ERP platform. They have de they're officially said that they're stopping development on it. And that's going to create a void that needs to be filled. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Meditech on the lower end of the spectrum that serves these regional individual health system that exists in rural areas. So those systems are need to be upgraded because the rural systems of most of anywhere else that have connectivity issues need the cloud platforms to kind of go through. So I mean, a lot of these, a lot of these healthcare platforms were, they were literally they were born in the mini computer era. <clears throat> it was yes. the old mantra was, let's buy a Vax, yes, and we'll become a value-added reseller. And healthcare was such a huge opportunity and so under technologized, not a word, but and and. Then over the years, these systems just kept getting you know, updated and now they're just left with this fossilized mess, right? Absolutely. And then the cloud comes in and that's really driving a lot of the change. Yeah, yeah. and Infor couldn't be positioning itself in a better time to make the change. Uh, you know, I think Charles was very visionary in kind of reinventing the old Lawson platform and making it multi-tenant, cloud-enabled, uh, you know, for the healthcare industry specifically written. So the last mile functionality that we talk about in supply chain that Infor has is unmatched, in our opinion, in the field today. Who, who does that last mile functionality if it's not embedded in the applications like Infor? Is it the, is it the SI? Is it you know, some other internal software developer? So the, the software developers, as Infor is, trying to build that as much in the software as they can. Right. But there's always extensions, which is where tools from the Infor OS, as an example, come in to allow to build the extensions that allow us to then have that capability. You do that work. We is do that, that right? work. Okay, Absolutely. and then how do you deal with Infor in terms of just not getting in the way of their roadmap? I mean, you know. So uh, Soma's got his R&D yes. you know, yeah. pipeline, and you don't want to just do something that he's going to do in a week, you know, yeah. a month or a year. How do you communicate with those guys, and how do you find the white space, and then does it somehow get back into the platform and become... You know, so Soma has spent $4 billion on product. That's the budget his board gave. I, I, I can't go in front of my board ask for that kind of a budget. <laughs> yeah, I'd be out. So, well, you could. Be, <laughs> I could, <laughs> yeah. Good laughs. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we're realistic in what we can do. So, the extensions we build are very specific and not necessarily product centric. We have a, uh, um, a good relationship with the product development team that allows us to see their roadmap and make sure. So, an example I'll give you is test automation. So, we've built an automation framework using an industry, uh, you know, recognized platform and customized it for the ERP for healthcare. So the, you know, regression testing is one of the largest pain point. Manual, laborious, takes the business users away. So this tool called AVAP Test Automation, which has been in the field, we have you know, close to 100 customers using it, allows us to automate that entire regression testing cycle and is an accelerator that mm -hmm. condenses the entire implementation life cycle. And you've got, we've, we've talked about a lot about healthcare. Uh, yeah. You have a, another interesting side of your business with a little Beatles connection. Yes. Uh, yeah, so fill us in on that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, two of the four awards we got, one, and we'll, uh, definitely want to talk on both of them because those are important parts of a business. Uh, one is retail. Uh, we did get retail uh, partner of the year award. And uh, Stella McCartney is our uh, project that we're actively working on in uh, UK. She, uh, Stella McCartney is 
Paul McCartney's daughter and has built a very reputable shoe company that's a brand uh, highly sought after. And uh, we're uh, working on modernizing their ERP uh, applications using Cloud Suite Fashion, uh, which has the underlying uh, technology based on M3 platform. She loves you, yeah, yeah. Right? That's cool. <laughs> no, <we're, laughs> that cool. Uh, 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 absolutely. That's great. Well, Josh, thanks for being here. Thanks for absolutely. sharing the story. Very uh, much. And Congratulations on all the progress. Right the, yeah, it sounds like it's the always awards, good to be here. It, it is full speed ahead. Uh, always. Good for you, Doran Shah from AVAP. Thank you. We're back with more on the Cube. We're at Informan, uh, Informa, rather. <laughs> I didn't Inform. get to that. Inform. Uh, I'll step in when you need me. 2018, <laughs> DC. Did it again. Excellent.